Hi everyone and welcome back for another live stream. I'm here with my husband Mark. Hey. And our channel is In the Studio Life Artistically. We sometimes cover news about music, visual arts, dance, um, even oddities and novelties, collectibles, and then on the back to the artsy side, artist talks, um, as well as covering maybe sometimes working as an artist, as well as other videos on cultural events and happenings across Canada. Hmm. But today, as you can see, we are going to talk about Baby Roo crayons. <laughs> and uh, Mark is a violinist, but he usually has some pretty good and funny input that's always relevant or not. And so we will begin our honest review of Baby Roo crayons. So we're going to talk about um, first the packaging and then some kind of mysterious uh, transition it made between two different brands. Um, yeah, and then <laughs> my mom was calling. Um, and uh, also how it feels to be applied to paper um and then some drawbacks as well as uh like some really good points about these baby root crayons um and then we're going to end with uh like what you see here what you could do with it and how it layers so first of all i guess we'll cover the the name part um <clears throat> so these are called the baby roo silky crayon and the thing is that it used to be called Joan Miro, and it said that it was a Spanish brand. But now if you see on Amazon, it's been completely rebranded to Jarmelo, which sounds, you know, so similar. So I don't know if it was just that another company bought it all out. Uh, and now I believe that the same kind of crayons, while they look very similar, is also being sold by Arteza. So if you guys have any insight into all of that, please let me know. So on to the look of um, how it looks. So you could use it as like in your art as an adult or a professional artist. I even think if you're sketching in your journals, scrapbooks, art books. Here I um, used it along with ink, pen, and water. And it applies really well. Here's a just a quick sketch of you know two basketball nets depicting a scene like in a Montreal ruelle or alleyway. And you have some you know garbage cans, an old tire. Um, and it went on. It goes on so smoothly and silkily, of course, as indicated in the name. So it um, it really allows you to be free and do fun things for sketches. This is my daughter's sketch and uh, <clears throat> so she loves it of course. She's like, ooh, it's so creamy, it's so silky. And if I draw out a shape for her, she can like sometimes color in things like that. Um, now it claims to be, you know, non-toxic, washable, and I'm always kind of wary of oops, sorry, claims like that when, um, you know, you're not too familiar with the brand because basically, you know, anyone can say that it's non-toxic, uh, but there's no, you know, proof backing that up. It's not like Crayola or a well-known brand where you know that there's some accountability and traceability. So... I can attest that it has no toxic smell, <laughs> but other than that, I'm not sure how far the non-toxic flame goes. And it also says that it is washable. So, you know, Mark has some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get to weigh in on this one. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, you probably mentioned that these uh, crowds do give off a few little particles. And the thing I noticed with uh, um, our little one is that uh, they push really hard on them and sometimes they give off um, mm -hmm. a few little small particles of the material. And actually if you press hard, a lot comes off actually. Like she was using it and you can see like big chunks. So what happens it. is they roll yeah. off onto the floor and then if you step on it, it kind of smears on the ground. Yeah. So it's we have like a that. few little, yeah, we have a few little <laughs> spots and you can see like an example if you have a little piece like this and then you 
yes. smudge it, it's pretty intense. Because just for that little piece. so creamy. Yeah, it's just like very concentrated color and pigment and all that. So actually I did a little test on the carpet. I tried water first to get it out and it kind of smeared it a bit more, but then rubbing alcohol actually worked really well to get um, all the color and the material off of the carpet. And I got the idea actually because uh, string players, violinists, cellists, um, violists, we use rubbing alcohol to clean the rosin off of our strings and the rosin we put on our bow and the bow touches the string and we'll use that rubbing alcohol to clean our strings, get the rosin off. So it definitely seemed to work for this material. Mm -hmm. But not on kids. <laughs> don't spray your kids down with alcohol. Yeah, or exactly. unless you do, I don't know. Yeah, don't clean their hands with it. <laughs> Soap and water will suffice for skin, but yeah. for carpeting, you so, need rubbing alcohol. Yeah, so I guess it's definitely not... I mean, if you use it with toddlers, of course, still with supervision. Um, and yeah, like right here, what I'm doing now is what was happening with our toddler. Um when you press a lot you have a lot of excess material that comes off and they are not going to be clean with it so they're going to get it all over their hands smear it all around smear it all around the surrounding table or floor yeah, it's like finger paints then almost <laughs> yeah if you really just dive into that one quality of it yeah but i mean that's it for the drawbacks um for the bonuses of pluses, there's a lot. One is that it has great layering capabilities. So like these two colors, I mean, you can just, that purple was quite strong and I applied it very thickly and you can still go over and cover it with brown or any other color. So pretty um, impressive for the coverability because I guess a lot of material does go, is being transferred so it can do that. Um, and yeah, and another thing is that the colors are so vivid, uh, so bright, so strong, really pleasant. So I'm next, I think I'm going to order one of the new Jarmello crayons and see if there's been any difference. And also maybe the Arteza ones. They look similar, so I wonder if they kind of followed in this trend of um, creamy crayons. One thing they said that is because they have this hard plastic holder, so, you know, tiny hands won't be able to break it as easily as they break crayons. Which is true, we have so many <laughs> broken crayons lying about now. Um, that's, a, that's actually a good compromise, so. Yeah, it is, yeah. One thing that the feel of the, the drawing when the, the tip hits the paper reminds me a lot of soapstone. Remember how we... I, I found a piece of soapstone in an art store and I was like, oh my god, it feels like so soapy, but it's stone. <laughs> so yeah, like unexpected texture. Yeah. Yeah, like you look at it and, it, and then upon <laughs> impact with the paper, it's like, oh wow, this feels really good. So that's it then for today's look at Joan Miro slash Jaramello crayons. Um, have a try and hopefully you enjoyed this review. Have fun cleaning your carpet too. <laughs> Bye.